So when you've already made the decision not to use a rolling release, you still have a question to answer when you're trying to choose a Linux distro, and that is, should you use a more minor release of a distro or an LTS? Now, this is really only a factor when you're dealing with an Ubuntu-based distribution. So things like Ubuntu itself, an Ubuntu flavor, Linux Mint, Elementary OS, Pop OS, things like that. Things that base themselves on Ubuntu and either do regular intermittent releases or long-term support releases. So you have to kind of decide which direction you want to go and which is best for you. So today what I want to do is talk about how to make that decision and which one's really right for you and kind of put in some advice on trying to make this decision. So let's do that. But before we do, if you'd leave a thumbs up on this video and uh, maybe a thumbs up will teach me not to hit the mic. I'd appreciate that. All right. So let's posit a scenario, shall we? You have decided to use Ubuntu as your Linux distribution. You've already tried it. You know you like it. You know you like their version of GNOME. You know you can get all your software and stuff like that. But you still really need to decide on what version of Ubuntu you want to use when it comes to the update cycle. And this scenario means that you are pretty much well set on Ubuntu, but you're not quite sure how new of software you actually need. And that's really what this question boils down to. Do you really need brand new software? When I'm talking about software, really what I'm talking about is the Linux kernel. Now, the Linux kernel is very nerdy and we don't really talk about a lot a lot about the Linux kernel on this channel simply because it is more technological than a lot of my audience really needs to hear about and most people don't deal with the Linux kernel they just use their browser and use a few applications they don't delve deep into what kernel they're using really you only start worrying about what kernel you're using when you install a distribution and you need it to work and that's the key component here is you need it to work and that's really the baseline of any Linux decision you need what you need to work right so what's the Linux kernel got to do with all this well older Linux kernels are going to have much smaller support or no support at all for newer hardware so when you're choosing what kernel or what release cycle for the kernel you're, you're looking towards you're going to want to take into account what hardware you have so if you have a brand new spanking computer that has you know, the, the top of the line graphics card, the best CPU that you can currently buy, all of that stuff, you're going to want a newer kernel. And chances are you're going to want more kernel updates than what the LTS is going to provide you. Now, there is a myth out there that when you use the LTS, you get no updates at all. That's not true whatsoever. You get actually a lot of updates when you're on the LTS, but you're only getting specific updates there's no feature updates none of that stuff you're going to get security updates and point releases of the long-term support kernel that is included on that particular flavor of ubuntu or whatever right so you are going to be stuck on the same version of the kernel which is going to mean probably no brand new hardware support features more on some exceptions to that here in a minute but for the most part you're going to be on one kernel version you'll get point releases of that kernel version and that's it. Now, if your hardware works on that long-term support release of Ubuntu, you're good to go, right? Then the question becomes, do you need more access to other software? Things like a newer version of GNOME, things like a newer version of files or any of the GNOME software, things like that. That's, that's more tedious and more individual than probably what's in the scope of this video because really only you're gonna be able to answer that. And for the vast majority of people, the answer to that is going to be no. You don't actually need that brand new hardware. You might want it, but you don't need it, right? So that's really where this conversation comes down to. But going back to the kernel for just a second, there are some exceptions to the whole LTS kernel situation, right? Sometimes, and in fact, I'd say most of the time, Ubuntu and distributions that function like this will send out what's called a hardware enablement patch. This doesn't mean you're getting a new kernel. Basically what it means is you're going to be getting certain pieces of a kernel patched into the kernel that you already use that supports newer hardware. Now, this important message, and it's important because Matt was just completely freaking wrong with what he just said. So Matt from the future here and well into the future. So I was editing this and I was like, you know what? What you just said, Matt, doesn't sound exactly right. So let's see if I can't correct some mistakes here. Mistakes were made, as they say. So 
the hardware enablement stack, not patch, is actually a brand new kernel. It's not something that patched is, patches into your existing kernel. It does actually provide you with the brand new kernel, which if you think about it makes way more sense than what I said, because it'd be hot harder for them to pull out all of the hardware stuff from the kernel and patch it into another kernel than just send you the kernel that supports the stuff. Now, what I, the, I did cut a, a part of what I said basically what I'm taking up with this little bit here. And the gist of that little bit was that the new stuff that you're getting with the hardware enablement stack is going to support some new hardware. And I was right about that because they don't send out the brand new kernel to you. At least as far as I'm aware and from what research I've seen, currently what it looks like you can get the 6.11 kernel with the hardware enablement stack. That's not the brand new latest kernel. 6.14 is what I have on OpenSUSE and, and that's usually about the newest that you can get. So if you subscribe to the hardware enablement stack, which again, you have to do explicitly, you don't just get this, which is again another mistake that I made you will get a newer version of the kernel, not just a patch of specific hardware fixes. So I got that part wrong. Most of the rest of the stuff that I said are, uh, stands. So to past me, and hopefully I don't have to cut in and correct any more of that douchebag mistake because he just gets, gets everything wrong when they do it. So the whole point of that is that it, it could help you support newer hardware on an LTS, but Again, it's not a guarantee. Also, that stuff kind of stuff takes a lot of effort, so it's not going to be as, it's not gonna support all of the hardware that you could conceivably get with a brand new kernel. On the other end of the whole conversation is the more rolling release type of Ubuntu, and it's not really a rolling release, really what it is is an intermittent release, right? It comes out every six months, it has a shorter su support period, and these releases will have newer support for hardware. So if you have that brand spanking new hardware and the LTS is for sure not going to work for you, or you do need the brand spanking new version of Nautilus for some reason, you'll want to be on those more frequently released versions of Ubuntu. And that's really the only situation where those types of Ubuntu are going to be absolutely for sure the better ones. It doesn't mean that they're ever bad, but they're usually more testing beds for stuff. So for example, when Ubuntu was going to release their brand new installer, that was tested on those intermittent releases where the LTS kind of stayed stable, right? So if you are more interested in testing out newer features and, and where Ubuntu is going, the intermittent releases is going to be better for you. Also, if you need better hardware support or you need access to more recent software. If you want something that is more stable, that changes less, the LTS is going to be the way to go. Also, if you're on older hardware, you're going to be have more luck with the LTS. Now, I'm, I'm not, it's disingenuous or a little bit misleading to say older hardware because when you see, hear the words older hardware, you think, you know, a ThinkPad from 2011 or 2009 doesn't necessarily need to be that old even a couple you know a year or two old is still considered older hardware and will work just fine on L uh, the LTS and it, of course it's not to say that newer hardware won't work on the LTS you can get it to work and in some cases if the LTS just came out you'll ha have just as much luck on that as you would the intermittent releases so this whole decision really does come down to the Linux kernel and the software that you need whoa hello it's me again. Yeah, I told you that I got everything wrong. Well, really, this isn't a correction, more just an expansion of what I said. And I couldn't get OBS to work, so that's the reason why you guys are just getting audio. So, just, we're going to have to deal with that. But the point I want to make this time is that there is another thing that I really didn't mention. I kind of breezed past it, is that there, the differences between the LTS and the more intermittent versions of Ubuntu isn't only about the hardware compatibility and the more recent software. It's a lot about that, but it's not only about that. It's also about the level and amount of updates you actually want to receive. The LTS version of Ubuntu will receive less updates. It will also, therefore, be more stable. Now, I want to put a proviso on that statement. It doesn't mean that the intermittent versions of Ubuntu are less stable, necessarily though they can be. Like I said in the video, when you guys could actually see my face, 
the intermittent versions of Ubuntu tend to be more testing grounds for new ideas that Canonical and Ubuntu have to offer you. Therefore, you tend to be more of a guinea pig. But that stuff is more rare as time has gone by, and I would say that on even ground, the intermittent versions of Ubuntu are plenty stable. But if you want absolute stability, the kind of stability you'd get if you used Ubuntu, then the LTS version is where you want to go. Stability really is the key here, and I'm astonished that I didn't actually cover it in the video because it's the obvious one, but I couldn't, I didn't feel right leaving this part out. So you guys are getting future Matt here explaining it when past Matt completely forgot to talk about it. So just as a reiteration to get it out there, stability is the key about all of this stuff, even beyond the hardware stuff, which I've spent most of the video on. So just keep that in mind and uh, thank you so very much. And hopefully once again, that this is the last time future Matt has to jump in and save past Matt's ass. And that's a decision you can't really make without trying both of them because you need to see what works, right? So if you try the, L I, what, I, what I would personally do is try the LTS first, because if you're going to use Ubuntu, you're not, probably not going to want, you're probably not the type of person seeking the most recent version of everything, right? You're, you're more of a Debian type user than you are an Arch type user. You're looking for something that is more stably released, more you know, infrequently released. So the LTS is probably where you'll want to go at least first. And if that works for you after a certain period of time, then you're good to go. But if you have hardware problems, chances are you can fix some of those at least by using the more inter intermittent releases of Ubuntu, things that come out every six months. So overall, I think that the decision really does come down to trying them both and seeing what works best for you. But at least now you have some inf information on how to make that decision and what kind of plays into it. So if this were me personally, I would use the LTS no matter what. And that's because I never have the top of the line hardware. And if, if I'm going to make it the choice to use something like Ubuntu or Linux Mint or whatever, I'm going to use a version of it that's going to stay as stable and as samey as long as possible and have as much support as possible for lo as long as possible. So that's where I would go, but it really does, it's a personal decision based on your hardware and your software needs. So that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Links for supporting me on YouTube and on Ko-fi. Those links will be in the video description as well. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly, honestly do appreciate it. So thank you for your support. If you want to support me, Patreon again is the best place to do so. Or you can head on over to the shop, which is av available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. I enunciated it properly that time. All proceeds for all the merchandise that I sell there goes towards making more Linux content for you guys. So thanks to everybody who has gone over there and checked that stuff out. And if you haven't yet, head on over there, check it out. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.